Tom Swift and His Motorcycle by Victor Appleton Chapter 21 Eradicate Gives a Clue Tell me all about it, urged Tom sympathetically, for he had a friendly feeling toward the aged man. Well, began Eradicate, I sure thought I were going to make money cutting grass, especially after you done fixed my moa, but peered like nobody wanted any grass cut. I traveled all over, and I couldn't get no jobs. Now, me and Boomerang has to eat, no matter if he is contrary, so I had to look for some new work. I traded that lawnmower off for a cross-cut saw, but that was such hard work that I had give it up. Then I got a chance to buy this year outfit cheap, and I bought it. Eradicate then went on to tell how he had purchased the portable sawmill from a man who had no further use for it and how he had managed to transport it from a distant village to the spot where Tom had met him. There he had secured permission to work a piece of woodland on shares, sawing up the smaller trees into cordwood. He had started in well enough cutting down considerable timber, for the man was a willing worker, but when he tried to start his mill, he met with trouble. I counted on Boomerang helping me, he said to Tom. All he has to do is walk on that treadmill and keep going. That make de saw go round, and I saw de wood. But the trouble am dat I can't get Boomerang to move. I done tried every means I knows on, and he won't go. I talked kind to him, and I talked harsh. And I done beat him with a club, and I rub his ears soft like, and he all is did like dat. But he won't go. I fed him on carrots, and I give him sugar, and I even starve him, but he won't go. Here I've been trying for three days now to get him started, and not a stick have I sawed. De man what I'm working with on shares, he get mad, and he say if I don't saw wood pretty soon, he going to get another mill here. Now I ask you fair, Mr. Swift, ain't I got lots of trouble? You certainly seem to have, agreed Tom, but why is Boomerang so obstinate? Usually on a treadmill a horse or a mule has to work whether they like it or not. If they don't keep moving, the platform slides out from under them, and they come up against the back bar. That's what done happened to Boomerang, declared Eradicate. He done back up against de bar, and there he stay. Tom went over and looked at the mill. The outfit was an old one, and had seen much service, but the trained eye of the young inventor saw that it could still be used effectively. Boomerang watched Tom as though aware that something unusual was about to happen. Here yeah, I done gone and invested my money in this here mill, complained Eradicate, and I ain't sawed up a single stick. If I wasn't so kind-hearted, I'd chastise that mule worse than it I has. That's what I would. Tom said nothing. He was stooping down, looking at the gearing that connected the treadmill with the shaft which revolved the saw. Suddenly he uttered an exclamation. Rat, have you been monkeying with this machinery? he asked. Me? "'Good land, Mr. Swift. No, sir. I wouldn't touch it. It's just as I got it from the man I bought it. Oh, it worked when he had it. But he used a hoss. It's all due to the contrariness of boomerang, and if I—' "'No, it isn't the mule's fault at all,' exclaimed Tom. "'The mill is out of gear, and tread is locked, that's all. The man you bought it off probably did it so you could haul it along the road. I'll have it fixed for you in a few minutes. Wait until I get some tools.' From the bag on his motorcycle, Tom got his implements. He first unlocked the treadmill so that the inclined platform on which the animal solely walked could revolve. No sooner had he done this than Boomerang, feeling the slats under his hoofs moving away, started forward. With a rattle, the treadmill slid around. But land, I must see it's going! cried Eradicate delightedly. It sure am going! he added as he saw the mule with nimble feet send the revolving endless string of slats around and around. But the saw don't move, Mr. Swift. You am pretty smart at fixing it as much as you has, but I reckon it's too busted. I ever thought it would. I's got bad luck, that's what I has. Nonsense, exclaimed Tom. The sawmill will be going in a moment. All I have to do is throw it into gear. See here, Rad, when you want the saw to go, you just throw this handle forward. That makes the gears mesh. "'What that about mush?' asked Eradicate. 
Mesh, not mush. I mean it makes the cogs fit together, see? And Tom pressed the lever. In an instant, with a musical whir, the saw began revolving. Hurrah! There it goes! Golly! See de saw move? cried the delighted man. He seized a stick of wood, and in a thrice it was sawed through. Whoop! yelled Eradicate. I'm saved now, bless you, old Mr. Swift. You certainly am a wonder. Now I'll show you how it works, went on Tom. When you want to stop Boomerang, you just pull this handle. That locks the tread, and you can't move it. And suiting the action to his words, Tom stopped the mill. Then, he went on, when you want him to move, you pull the handle this way. And he showed the man how to do it. In a moment the mule was moving again. Then Tom illustrated how to throw the saw in and out of gear and in a few minutes the sawmill was in full operation, with a most energetic man feeding in logs to be cut up into stove lengths. "'You ought to have an assistant, Rad,' said Tom, after he had watched the work for a while. "'You could get more work done, and move on to some other woodpatch.' "'That's right, Mr. Swift, so I had, but I done tried and couldn't get any. I asked several men, but they'd rather whitewash and clean chicken coops.' I guess I'll have to go it alone. I asked a man yesterday if he wouldn't like to pitch in and help, but he said he didn't like to work. He was a tramp, and he had the nerve to ask me for money, me, a hard-working man. You didn't give it to him, I hope. No, indeedy, but he come so close to me that I was a scared he might take it from me, so I kept holding the club. He sure was a bad-looking tramp and he kept laughing all the while like he was happy. "'What's that?' cried Tom, struck by the words of the man. "'Did he have a thick brown beard?' "'That's what he had,' answered Eradicate, pausing in the midst of his work. "'He sure were a funny sort of tramp. His hands done look like they'd never worked, and he had a funny blue ring on one finger, only. It wasn't like regular, you know. It was pushed right under his skin.' like a man i seen in the circus once all colored with funny fingers tom leaped to his feet which finger was the blue ring tattooed on he asked and he waited anxiously for the answer let me see it were on de right no it were on de little finger of de left hand are you sure rad sure mr swift i took tickler notice cause he carried a stick in that same hand it must be my man happy harry exclaimed tom half aloud which way did he go rad after he left you he went up de lake shore replied the man he asked me if i knowed of an old big house up there what nobody lived in and i said i did then he left and i were glad of it which house did you mean rad why that old mansion what general harkins used to live in before de war there ain't nobody lived in it for some years now, and it's deserted. Maybe a lot of tramp stays in it, and that's where this man were going. Maybe, assented Tom, who was all excitement now. Just where is this old house, Rad? Away up the head of Blake Carlopa. I used to work there before the war, but it's been a good many years since quality folks lived there. Why, did you want to see that man, Mr. Swift? Yes, Brad, I did, and very badly, too. I think he is the very person I want. But don't say anything about it. I'm going to take a trip up to that strange mansion. Maybe I'll get on the trail of Happy Harry and the men who robbed me. I'm much obliged to you, Rad, for this information. It's a good clue, I think. Strange that you should beat the very tramp I've been searching for. Well, I sure am obliged to you, Mr. Swift, for fixing my sawmill. That's all right. What you told me more than pays for what I did, Rad. Well, I'm going home now to tell Dad, and then I'm going to start out. Yesterday you said it was. You saw Happy Harry. Well, I'll get right after him. And leaving a somewhat surprised but very much delighted man behind him, Tom mounted his motorcycle and started for home at a fast pace. 